Hello, so this is the first video for week three. In week two, we looked at a 2D modeling and a bit of meshing and quite a lot on convergence studies and all the pitfalls like stress singularities. So now we're going to come back to something that's quite common, of course, which is full 3D modeling. So we're going to start, the usual, with a static structure. And the geometry, well, I already built uh, a model, so call it a model of Conrad. So I import that and I saved, I made it in uh, SolidWorks, and I saved it as a parasolids, like I did in a week. I showed you in uh, the last video on a uh, week one. Uh, I will put a video as well how to do it in SolidWorks. Okay, so okay, this being done, let's uh, let's go straight to the modeling simulation by looking especially at meshing. So in, in this, uh, this session, I really want to start looking at meshing, especially what is a quality mesh. So mechanical is opening, it's importing, it's importing the parasolid, and that's what it looks like. Right, let's make sure that I've got the units uh, the way I want. Units, put them in, yeah, millimeter, okay, all cool. Very good, so what have we got here? We have got um, connecting rod, Okay, so what does it got? Yeah, quite a lot of stuff. Right. So let's. What we want to do is probably pull it both ways. Let's have a look at it in intention and tree matter at, at that stage. But first of all, I'm going to generate a mesh. I'm going to mesh, and I'm just going to generate the basic mesh. That's what this looks like. Okay, so that's the mesh. It's spitting out. So it's not a very good mesh. Now I can see it by eye because I've got some experience. Uh, but there are other tools uh, to make sure to, to decide what is a good mesh and what is not a good mesh. And so the first thing to do is to so I'm on the mesh, I'm in the mesh uh, detail, and I will have a look at some statistics. Statistics simply tell me the number of nodes and the number of elements. We already had a look at that in uh, in week two. Something else that is quite important is to be able to look at the quality. Of the mesh. So if you look at the quality of the mesh, I obtained it by clicking on the, by expanding that tab. It's also, but what I really care about is a mesh metric here. At the moment, it's not calculating any mesh metrics, but you can click, click, click on it. It gives you a lot of choice. So there are different mesh metrics, right? Element quality, aspect ratio, different different Jacobians the skewness and uh, and so on so i'm going to have a look first of all at the aspect ratio just just to illustrate right so when you select a mesh metric you obtain you obtain the following and uh, the following um, graph what it's an histo this is the kind of graph is called an histogram and the aspect ratio is essentially a ratio of um, largest dimension of uh, the uh, smallest one. I don't remember exactly how it's calculated. If we wanted to, to, to check, we could quite easily uh, use, use the help, uh, as I uh, as mentioned in the middle of the tutorial. Ah, yeah, I should insist that don't just watch the videos. Okay, the videos are what they are. And uh, But uh, in order to learn, you really should do the tutorial for, for this week as well. The tutorial is on a different shape, actually two different shapes, a bracket, and also a very interesting pneumatic uh, finger. But it, it uh, it's designed to uh, to look at the same at the same issue. So this week, meshing quality quality and three D elements. So what that, well, you can do some cool stuff with uh, with the mesh um, histogram. And if you click, for instance, on a bar of histogram, it's going to give you all uh, the elements that have an aspect ratio between one twenty three and two fifty. So that this is a good aspect ratio. The worst, the bad aspect ratio are Right around here. So if I I've got a nasty one there, which has an aspect ratio above 15, and I can see it's along there. Why is it so bad? Why? Well, because it's a very flat, very flat one. And that's a consequence. That's a consequence of the fact that there's a pocket there. Okay, so the measure is trying its best, but not doing a great job. Not doing a great job. If you click anywhere else, it's going to, to then show you the uh, the, um, the mesh, the mesh again. Something else we can do to look at the inside of the mesh is to use a section plane. 
So when we do that, I want to look perpendicular to the axis. So I'm going to go here and you go into the home menu and insert a section claim. So that comes there and I'm going to place it here. It doesn't really matter. I've got a new one and then you just draw a line. Just draw it perpendicular here and that's it. You've got your section plane. So that's that can uh, that can uh, you can you select your section plane and you can do some uh, some tricks with it. You can actually move it from there and you should be able to move it along. So if you look at it, you have the the, the center of it. And when you click on, on on that blue square, you can you can move it. If you click on the other, so the side you're looking at is for the big uh, big head. If you click on the dotted dashed line will show you the, the other one, which is of course. So this is quite a mess in, in the middle of, of that mesh. And, and I think there is something else. I can't remember now. Ah, if you click yes on both on, on both line, then you can you can see your set just it's just gonna give you a section that I want to see that. Are there are some uh, so some other uh, options in the section plane? Uh, Yes, I like that one. Shows the whole element, so it doesn't cut the element. It shows the full element. I think it's a bit neater. It's actually quite interesting when you do that as well. It's going to show the elements of the angle. You don't have to uh, to see it. You can untick it, and then you can see the, the element. So that's another tool to to uh, to investigate to investigate the mesh. Right. Anyway, so we should kind of I should know that this is a rubbish rubbish mesh. It contains. It contains. Um, it's basically based on um, on tetrahedra, tetrahedra elements. Okay, so like three D triangles, if you want, and, and that's not, not ideal. Like it is. Now, why does why does uh, mechanical start with mesh? At? It's not likely to, to be the uh, uh, the best mesh. Well, it's basically because it's always going to succeed. You always are going to be able to get a mesh with, with tetrahedra, even if they are not necessarily the, the best to converge. Let's have a look at other um, other metrics. So the aspect ratio here. That's another one that is useful, or that I like anyway. And different analysts have different uh, different uh, tastes, but skewness is another is another good uh, another good one. Again, so you can check the skewness of things. So it's a value between uh, zero and one, and zero it is not very skewed. So these are the nice elements, the closest to a perfect function. Tetrahedra. The dry dryer, and these are, are the worst. So as a rule of, so these are, yeah, these are the worst. So as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, you want as, as many as possible to be below, uh, below zero, uh, below below half. And as a rule of thumb as well, you uh, you want you want uh, aspect ratio to be uh, below five, as much as possible. Okay, so that's really a terrible mesh. I mean, I could see see it from a just by looking at it, but I, I, I can also have some metrics that, that can confirm that. Okay, um, so what can I do? Well, can I, can, I, uh, can I improve the mesh? Oh, absolutely. So what we can do is insert a method. We can insert many things. We can insert method and sizings. The rest is a bit complicated. We won't look at that in, in this term. But uh, sizing, well, let's enter the sizing. But, uh, we need to uh, select the yellow, yellow thing, so geometry. Now, look at the geometry. It's selecting here a face. I don't want a face. I want to select the entire object. Select the object. It becomes green, and I can select it here. So I'm going to size on the entire body. And at the moment, it's giving me a six, uh, six point five uh, default. And that six point five is also the size of that circle around the crossbar. Uh, so that's quite an un an handy way to to get to, to the edges. Let's make it a bit smaller and make it. Let's try a three millimeter. Okay, so uh, that's fine, it's done, and let's go to mesh and uh, update it. So it's actually the mesh, and it's a significantly better looking mesh, but it's still far from being perfect. Okay. Still far from being perfect, but improved. So if we look at the, uh, if we look at the same uh, what do you have? The skewness. The skewness. As you can see the skewness has significantly improved, and uh, maturity is now below, below, uh, below, uh, below 
door. But still, I still have got quite a few dodgy, dodgy things there. What is that one? I can't see. Ah, and because I'm still in the section mode, or in the section play. Yeah, quite a lot of nasty stuff. Look at the brass elements, that one there. there. Yeah, it's all very flat, very, very dubious. So, I mean, I could improve, keep improving the size, but I think one of the main issues here is that we have got, uh, we have got Excite, sorry, Tetraedra, and not Excite, so Tetraedra with four sides. So, how do I improve that? So I will try to give, to this time, give it a, a method, and that method, again, we need to select the, the shape, uh, and the body, and I will, I will give it a method. So, my favorite method is a so-called uh, multi-zone. Multi-zone is a powerful method that does a lot of the work uh, for us. Let's try that. And let's try to update multi-zone. Okay, so the optimizer, sorry, the measure, the, it, well now it, a different measure is, is working in, in the background trying to solve things. And completely failed. Absolutely did not like it at all. Okay, so, and if, if you try that, it's not going to be happy at all. It just does not want to, uh, the multi-zone is not going to, uh, to work. And if we check in the uh, error, it finds that there are, there are some issues, that that shape cannot be uh, swept. So, sorry, not, well, yeah, multi-zone is basically sweeping in different areas. We, I could try a, a sweep as well, it wouldn't, it, it would not work. Uh, a slightly less aggressive, uh, Slightly less aggressive uh, method is to try to try an uh, X dominant. So that's another way thing that we should improve the mesh a bit, but not as powerful as the multi zone. So that's the reason why it doesn't start with multi zone. Multi zone can fail and will fail quite often. So let's update that one. And it's doing its best. It's converting what it can. So it's significantly uh, nicer, I think. And what is going? Oh my goodness! It's giving me this time. The matrix looks a bit more complicated because we have different histograms for the different different types. So we still have some tets, and you can see the tets are the worst in terms of, uh, of uh, the tets are in red. The tetraedra. So let's what are they? What are they? Still quite flat. Not very good because it needs it can't do a perfect a perfect job. So still off these elements. Now I'm uh, I'm trying to avoid having these these elements with poor quality because. They will make convergence slower, and uh, it's possible that they give dodgy v uh, values, especially for for the strain and the stress. Displ displacement, as we have seen in the lecture, will probably be fine. Does converge quite quickly, but the stress will be uh, will be dangerous. So I'm not too happy with uh, with these. What are these? What's, oh, yes, one I've selected. Okay, so still absolutely not ideal. Okay, not in this one. Okay, so it, it's 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 better, but not it. Now I could improve it again by refining the size. Uh, preferring the size, absolutely no doubt about that. Um, but there are other issues there. Something else that um, is important, a rule of thumb this time, not a metric, is that you should have at least three elements, three through the thickness, I will correct, have three elements down there. So I will need to refine, to refine the size. Well, to cut a long choice short, if I do that, I'm still going to get some, uh, some dubious mesh. And the issue is that, let's have a look at the, uh, let's have a look at uh, the statistic. Well, uh, there are some limits. I, I will improve. I will increase the dimension, the size of, of the node element, and uh, it will become com quite cumbersome. Because remember that the computation cost varies as the square of the number of uh, of elements. So I need to be a bit smarter here. Uh, just throwing, reducing uh, the size uh, is going to cost me a lot, and I'm still not still getting some some dubious elements. So something that is absolutely obvious when you look at it is that well this is, there is some symmetry in there and you can cut it like that and like this so best thing to do is to be smart and come back and and, uh, and do some symmetry something else as well is that it looks like this pocket here is giving me some some meshing issues it's quite it's quite small i think 1.3 millimeter deep uh, it's not it's not helping so is it an important feature well maybe yes maybe not but remember simulation is approximation so we could remove it so i will, I will do, i'm going to, to do that in uh, in uh, design modeler simplify and apply symmetry and then we'll, we'll come back and try to get an, an, an image mesh